Hi, I'm Philip from the HANA Academy. In this series of videos we're looking at the External Machine Learning Library. This video tutorial is based on HANA 2.0 SPSO 3. To learn how to use this functionality in a later or earlier release, please check our YouTube channel. A common request when working with the External Machine Learning Library is how you can access a TensorFlow server for development or testing just learning purposes. Um, and but do that on SUSE Linux because that's typically where your HANA server is going to be. Now you wouldn't want to do that in production but it can be good for just learning. When you've got a HANA server perhaps you're using HANA Express and you want to just have a version of TensorFlow serving running there that you can do your testing with. Well in this video series we've already shown how you can set up TensorFlow serving on uh, Ubuntu um, so non uh, SUSE Linux uh, flavors However, what we're going to do in this video is show how you can set up TensorFlow serving on SUSE Linux and I'm going to do that on a Google Cloud Platform instance of HANA Express. Now one of the challenges with TensorFlow serving is that the TensorFlow model server is not yet available as a binary. So that means you have to basically compile it from source. What we can do however is access a binary that's been created for us by SAP. It's not available officially as software but it's something that you can use uh, on an unsupported basis and it will help you out certainly with development and uh, just learning and testing. So let's get started. First thing we should do is go to the HANA Academy GitHub repository so github.com sub HANA Academy. Let's find the EML repository in there. So look in the repository list. You might find it in the list or you can always search to find EML. And what we'll find in the code snippets area is that we've got EML 14 install TensorFlow serving SUSE. So let's open that one up and have a look. We've got a list here of the commands that we're going to need to do. So we're going to need to have um, command line access on the HANA server or the SUSE Linux server that you want to do this installation on. So let's go to our Google Cloud platform. In my case, I'm going to start a, an SSH session so that I can put some commands in. So the first thing I'm going to do is to sudo so that I've got uh, admin rights on the machine. So let's do a sudo i. So sudo. Now I've got the admin rights. Let's clear so we get a clear screen. There are a number of prerequisites that I'm going to need to install. But before I do that, I'm going to create a folder that we can store all that stuff in. So let's make a directory. We can call it tf or TensorFlow. Now we'll add some writes, so it's change mod 777 on that folder and we can change to it. So of course you can use any folder name you like. Now let's start to install these prereqs. Now the first thing we're going to need to have to install is git. So if you've not got that already you would do zipper and then in for install and git. And next thing would be to install Python. Now you may already have Python, um, but if not, then you would go install Python. Python 2 is just fine. In this case, Python 2.7 is already installed. But what you should probably do is make sure that you've got an up-to-date version. So zipper up or update on Python is a good thing to do. In this case, again, we've got the latest version, so we're good to go. We're also going to need Python development. So we can do the same thing with Python then devl. So Python dash devel. Now that's not installed, so I'm going to go ahead and install that now. And once we've done that, again, we can check we've got the latest version, so we can use up. Now the next thing we're going to do is to get pip, which is the Python installation. Now the best way to do this is to actually download a Python script which will then go out and install pip for us. So let's go back to our script. You can see here we've got a little wget that will allow us to basically download this script which we can then run. So let's go back to our code. Let's paste that in. So let's get that file and then we can run it. It's just have a look then we can just simply do Python and the name of that file so we can copy and paste it in and we'll go out and install pip for us. So that's good. Now you may find uh, when you install TensorFlow which we're going to do in a moment that you have some issues around the fact that the, a package called 6 has already been installed. 
So this is particularly, I noticed this when I did it on the HANA Express uh, on the on Google Cloud Platform, but it may not be the case. It's certainly not the case on all uh, flavors of SUSE Linux. So for that, what we can do is do an install of six, and the easy way there is to go back to the code. We can see we've got pip install, and then we're going to ignore the fact that there already might be some of it installed because it's not the version that we actually need. So what we're going to do is going to install what's ignore what's installed and then make sure that uh, an up-to-date version of six has been installed. So now 1.11. Now we're ready to go ahead and actually install TensorFlow. So we can do that. We can actually do a very similar command. Basically, what we're going to do is say pip install and make sure it's the latest version. So we're going to say upgrade as well, and then TensorFlow. So this is the core TensorFlow libraries. So that's TensorFlow installed. Now the next thing to do will be to set up some TensorFlow serving prereqs. Now TensorFlow serving uses Google's remote uh, procedure calling, uh, so gRPC. So the first thing would be to make sure that we install that. Again, we can do that using pip, pip install upgrade to get the latest version, and it's g Google RPC remote procedure call and then IO. So let's go ahead and install that. Okay, that's done. We're also going to want to install the TensorFlow serving API. So for that one, we can go again, upgrade TensorFlow, and then it's dash serving dash API. That's now installed. And the final thing is we want to clone the Git repository, which has got TensorFlow serving in it, because it's going to have the uh, examples, some example scripts that we're going to run as part of our test. So for that, I'm going to go back to here because I can now simply go and copy and paste the git clone command that we're going to use to basically get that uh, repository locally onto our disk in our TF folder. So let's go ahead and paste that and let's run it. It'll take a couple of seconds to now download. And if we actually have a look, we'll find that we've got a serving folder and within there, we've got lots of useful TensorFlow serving stuff. So now we're ready to go and get that TensorFlow serving binary. And for that, we'll go back to here. Now you'll see that there is a URL here, which actually goes to a Google Drive folder. So let's copy and paste that. Because you're going to want to choose which pre-created binary you want to use. So there's a readme file. So I'd recommend that you download that uh, and have a look at it. Now if we go and uh, choose to open it, you can use WordPad and that will give you all the information you need. It gives some examples, tells you where the uh, libraries come from, et cetera, et cetera, where the source code comes from. And you'll get information on all the different flags and options that you can use with these binaries. Now we don't need to go into that in detail now, so let's carry on. The next thing we would actually want to do, however, is to download the binary. Now, depending on whether you're running on PowerPC or, or regular um, Intel architecture, I'm on Intel here, and you've got two choices. You would probably want to take the first one, where the file name is 1.5.2 or newer. Uh, for compatibility, there's a 1.01, .01, but I would highly recommend you take the latest RPM. So what we can do is click that, and now we want to download it. Now, I'm actually downloading this to my desktop here, not to the HANA server. So you have a choice, you can download the RPM file like this, and then you can uh, FTP it or use a WinSCP, whatever method to then transfer that. Um, or what you could also do if you want to get it directly is I can just show all. I can now find the URL that this file was downloaded from. I can copy that link, and now I can go into my command line and I can just do a wget and paste in that value and that will now do the download directly to my machine. Uh, of course, it's not giving it the quite the right name that I want. So I can also just do a move command to take that file and make it an RPM. So I'll copy that, paste it, and we'll call this uh, tms.rpm. And once we've done that, we need to install it. And for that, we use the RPM command and then dash I for install. And then we give the name, which I happen to call tms.rpm. 
and in a couple of seconds it will be installed. Now once that's done, we'll find that it's actually in the user local lib model server folder that the binaries have been installed. Now if you don't remember that URL, you can easily go back to the script here and you'll see that I've actually got an example. Let's copy that and paste it in. And one of the things that's in there is the check CPU feature script. This shell script allows you to identify what you've got on your machine so you know which um, binary you're actually going to call. So let's just run that. And if we look, it detects that we've got some CPU features. We've got AVX. So we should use the binary which is called TensorFlow underscore model underscore server dash AVX because there are others. If we were just to do a directory on that folder, you'll see that there are actually other binaries as the AVX SSE and AVX2. So you run the check CPU features to know which one you should run on the server where you've installed it. So we're good to go now, but what we do need is a model. So this is not part of the real installation, but we can quickly train a model. Uh, we've got uh, plenty of examples of the code of doing that. We've seen this in previous videos. So we can actually go down here and quickly train our model. So to do that, we would use these lines of code. We'd make a folder, set rights on the folder because I want to keep this model um, permanently. And let's just go and run that. So let's paste that in. Goes ahead, makes the folders. Okay, changes to the serving folder. Now I can run the example which we got when we uh, cloned the Git repo. And we're going to store it in that MNIST underscore model folder. So it's going and getting some download data, some example data. It's training the model and it's done its 0.9% accuracy. So it's just very, very simple, uh, hello world kind of example. But now we've done that, we're ready to go ahead and serve our model. And if you remember, we want to use the TensorFlow model server dash AVX. That's what the check CPU features recommended we do. So if we go back to the code, you'll see that I've got the line here that will allow us to start our TensorFlow server. So if I copy that and I paste that in here. Now, before I run it, I need to make a change because I've not specified the exact name of the file here. I need to now change that to the right syntax, which was, let's just go and verify it. It's AVX. So we're going to do AVX. So now we should be able to go ahead and run that. It's going to take the model that we've called, called MNRST, and it's going to serve it up on port 9000 on this server, which happens to be my HANA server. So the model server's running, the TensorFlow model server's running. That's all we need to do to get everything up and working. Now whilst we're here, why don't we just have a quick test of that. So we can go into uh, Web IDE for HANA. Now I've already got an EML user set up. See other videos in the series for how to do that. Nothing particularly changed. But one of the things I can do now I'm here is in SPS03, I can create my um, remote source. I can do it with SQL, but I can also create it interactively. So you see we now have the remote sources. So if I choose remote sources, or none there, but I right mouse button and choose new remote source and I can give it a name. For example, I might want it called my tensor flow model server. And then I need to choose the adapter. And for this one, the adapter is going to be GRPC, the Google Remote Procedure Call. And then I need to specify at a minimum the server. So for that, the server is going to be localhost as it's on my HANA server. And the port, if you remember, was 9000, but it could be whatever port you are happening to happen to use. If you want, uh, though it's not quite possible in the UI, you can also in SPS03 specify a proxy server and port and also proxy login credentials should your HANA system be installed behind a firewall and it needs to go from behind that firewall to the open internet, for example, to access uh, the TensorFlow server. So we can now access um, um, servers via a, a firewall that are beyond the firewall. So you can specify proxy settings as well when you create a remote source. So we see that our TensorFlow model server has been created. All that now remains is for us to go ahead and do some of the config. Now we've got that. Let's go back to uh, actually EML09 where we create the remote source and register the model.
Now the remote source, we just did it interactively, but we do need to now register that model to say what model it is we're serving. So I'm going to copy that code and put that into web ID for HANA. So let's go ahead with the first bit. We're going to uh, register MNIST as being a model that's available in our remote source, which is called TensorFlow Model Server. And I can then, let's just review what the we got as results. Okay, looking good. I can then create a parameter table so that I can make a change that will actually apply the changes because I'm actually updating a table and then I need to apply those changes. This has all been covered in previous videos. Nothing changed really for SPS03. And finally, what I want to do is do a check just to make sure that our model is up and running. So I can insert to the parameters table saying I want, I want the MNIST model. And then I can do a call to this email check destination procedure with that setting. And hopefully I'll get a zero back. Yes, I've got zero back saying that's able to access that remote uh, server, the remote source, and it's actually finding the model MNIST on there and everything looks good. The only other thing we would now need to do is to actually go and do our inference because the training's obviously been done already. Now, if you want to do the inference, we can use the SPS03 example doing multiple inferences. So EML14, so we sorry, EML13 score multiple digits. So we can go ahead and run that code. So let's select it, copy it, and now we'll paste it in. And we should be able to go ahead and run this code and hopefully we'll get results. And after a couple of seconds, the procedures run and the second results we can see, yep, in our results table, we've got five different inferences that have been done. So these have been sent parallel individually in one go to the uh, TensorFlow model server that we set up. So what we've seen in this video is how we can install and set up TensorFlow model server on SUSE Linux which means you can get started, you can test, and you can do learning uh, or start some development uh, using uh, the TensorFlow serving, using the external machine learning library, and do that on your HANA Express machine in the case where you don't have access to another server that might have TensorFlow serving already running on it. You can find more HANA video tutorials on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to be informed as soon as new video tutorials are published, then please subscribe. You can also connect with us on LinkedIn and follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.